Hello, and welcome to our Alumni Spotlight Podcast. My name is Autumn, and I work to tell the amazing stories of our students and alumni here at Penn Foster. Today, I'm talking with Angela Schack, who graduated from our Associate in Business Management program in 2019 and earned her Bachelor's in Business Management in 2020. Welcome, Angela. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Angela, I know you have an amazing story, so I want to get right into it. Um, can you tell me a little bit first how you found Penn Foster and what you were up to before enrolling with Penn Foster? Absolutely. So I would say um, I, I graduated high school and I knew I wanted to go to college, um, but I also had to fully support myself. So I needed to have a job. I needed, to, I wasn't able to just um, um, unpack my life and attend college. So uh, I started in a junior college and then ended up having to relocate in Texas and then having to relocate to Las Vegas. And I had to basically start all over. And I felt like it just it just wasn't going to happen for me. You know, college education seemed very out of reach. So my sister actually um, was uh, married to someone that was in the army and heard about Penn Foster and recommended that I look into it. So I ended up uh, looking into Penn Foster and found that they had uh, an associate's bachelor, bachelor's management program and felt like it would be a good start. So I started with Penn Foster and uh, it, it was a very long journey, but it allowed me to also relocate back to Texas. And I was able to stay with the same uh, school to, to really achieve my education no matter where I lived. So, uh, so that's how I started, and really, it just I started with the bank at Bank of America, and um, and was just trying to complete my education. Yeah, that's great, and and like you said, you were able to move and be where you wanted to be, and your education kind of you know was able to come with you and follow you along since it's online. Exactly. So, what did you like most about pursuing an education online? I would say the the flexibility um it it really was something like like how you put it it was something I was able to keep alongside with me um so if you think about my life I was in Vegas and I I ended up getting married had two kids still was able to attend Penn Foster they're so flexible um it truly is at your own pace and then as I was climbing the corporate ladder um I was able to still continue my education and um, so grow, growing a family, growing a career, and maintaining my education is what I liked about Penn Foster the most. Yeah, that's so true. And you're definitely busy. So it's so amazing that um, with two kids, being married, working, you were able to to graduate not once, but twice. So congratulations there. And then, um, Angela, I know you mentioned um, having two kids. So what did this mean for your family, you pursuing an education? And, and how did your husband and uh, children support you along the way? Oh, that's a tremendous question. So uh, my husband did the, the normal uh, graduate high school, start college thing and, and finished in four years. And for me, I, I started my journey with a family and trying to do my education. So what what Tim Foster proved is you can do both, you can have it all, but you also have to be extremely responsible <laughs> and actually schedule out your, your education and ensure that you, um, you, you just make it a part of your DNA. So um, I would say really just fo focusing on the fact that um, you can do both and showing and proving to my kids education is very important. They saw the struggles I went through with interviews and getting declined because I didn't have a degree. And then they saw me break through. They saw the struggle. They saw me the responsibility of studying. And I remember telling them the story, hey, do you want to do it like dad or do you want to do it like mom? <laughs> you know, that, that's much easier. Um, and then you can see how tough it is if you, if you wait. Um, but regardless, it's possible. So they were a yeah. huge part of it. That's so great. And yeah, when did you find the time to study and um, what were some study habits that you created that maybe would help other students? Absolutely. So um, I would say wh whatever plan you create, stick to it. And if you don't stick to it, just just get back on board and don't don't give yourself a hard time. I think the, the self-judgment and 
feeling like um, the feeling you just can't do it, you've got to get that out of your head. It takes time, um, but you have to keep re- redirecting your mind and saying, okay, I may have fell off the boat a couple weeks, but jump right back on. Um, I would say for me, I'm more of a morning person. So uh, re- reading my studies um, and you know, uh, reading my books and doing a lot of things, you can do it anywhere at any time, um, is, was in the mornings before the family woke up and then um, also during my commute on my train ride. And then also um, if I had exams, um, the great thing is they have proctored exams now virtually. So mm-hmm. I would I would try to do that, um, obviously not at home. So I would coordinate that in the office of some sort. Um, and then uh, my weekends were packed. <laughs> so I remember reading books on the way to soccer games. <laughs> and uh, but ba- basically fit, fitting it in any fitting it in any time anywhere. Um, and and the weekends were also a really big opportunity for me to buckle down and crank out as much as I can. Yeah, that's awesome. And I love what you said about, uh, you know, coming up with the plan. And even if you fall off, just jumping back on and sticking to it. Um, we, I think feel like we stress all the time about study tips and staying motivated. So that's some great advice there. And then Angela, I know you're working at Bank of America and um, throughout you are graduating two de- with two degrees, two different degrees. I know you mentioned that um, there was some possibility for you to climb that corporate ladder and move up. Can you tell me about your growth at Bank of America as you um, kept earning more credentials and and diplomas? Absolutely. And it it really was a gradual increase in in corporate ladder with education. Um, It really is a testimony that education really helps you break through the um, what uh, what I, I I call a cement ceiling because um, you if you get to a point where you just cannot break through without your education. So I would say um, when when I earned my associates, I was an individual contributor and um, and I made you know I was internal and grew internally. So I made you know probably. Um, a decent salary, but not anything compared to what a, a college educated graduate would have. Um, so I, I got my associates though. And then when I, I started breaking through to my bachelor's is when um, the bank made a huge exception to promote me as a manager, knowing that I was on my way to get my bachelor's. Um, so, you know, it speaks testimonies to the bank um, and believing in their employees. But mm-hmm. also at that time, there was a huge increase. And when I did earn my bachelor's, the the increase really did reflect that. And specifically, I was a vice president corporate title without my degree. And then I earned my degree and I earned my director title. Um, And that actually put me into a much larger earning potential bracket. And I'm, I'm convinced I would have never achieved that director title without my degree. So the earning potential is much greater. And because I have my bachelor's, I am um, no longer an individual contributor. And I lead a team of treasury associates. I have about 15 associates on my team. They're all uh, revenue generating associates. And um, so really from a growth perception or perspective, I was able to grow as a leader, as a manager, move from an individual contributor and I uh, get an increase in my corporate title to help me earn financially more in the future. Yeah, that's amazing. And I'm sure that that pay bump has helped in, in so many ways and having that title and reflecting what you, the work you put into getting a degree. So that's amazing. And congratulations there. So how would you, what would you say to other students about, education, um, being an investment and taking the time to invest in themselves? What would you say there? You know, it's, that's a really good question because I've talked to a few people that have been uh, struggling to, to finish. Uh, m- many of us start, but uh, many of us don't finish uh, till through our, our bachelor's um, achievement. So I would say when you haven't achieved it, t- typically I would think, I would always say it's just a piece of paper. <laughs> Right. It's just a piece of paper. You know, it's not um, 
you know, why, why is it required? I've been with the bank, you know, over 15 years. Is that not good enough? Well, when I, when I started getting into my, um, my, my junior and senior year in the bachelor's program, no longer did I feel like it was a piece of paper. I was like, no, (laughs) this is awesome. This is what I do every day. This is relevant to my job. I literally saw growth on a daily basis as I was learning the different courses in my job and in my performance and how I worked. And it really did take me to the next level. So I would say education is, it's, it's a superpower and it really does set you apart. Um, It helps you see things differently. It helps you see things at a much broader perspective and, um, and it just makes you better and and it actually was the catalyst to help me to want to continue my career or my education. Um, you know, I've been looking into different certifications, maybe taking my education and moving towards an MBA program, which which you can totally do. And uh, but that it was really the the base and the stepping stone to so much more. So education really is everything. That's so great. And I love that you said that you're considering more avenues now, whereas before you earned your bachelor's or even associates, you might not have considered ever continuing your education and staying within the uh, continuing education that long. Exactly. And then Angela, so what do you think your favorite thing about Penn Foster was and being a Penn Foster student? I would say um, at the beginning, I have this perception that um, I forgot that I was in college to learn, and I felt like I, I needed to seem to know it all, <laughs> which doesn't make any <laughs> sense. It's very backwards. Um, but the instructors were so supportive. And, you know, I just think about the very first paper I wrote compared to the, the last paper I wrote in my senior year. And they were so supportive. The, the feedback they would give back on my, um, on, on my, my, my papers was very thorough and um and helped me grow tremendously so i just compare like you know freshman to senior year Mm -hmm. and if it wasn't for the instructors i just i I know i wouldn't have grown as much as i did um but you think it's difficult because it's virtual you never really see them and you don't really have to talk to them but they handle everything online they're so thorough in their in their feedback and i would say the support of the instructors the flexibility, and then also the support of, um, and anytime you call in the the care um, individuals for education, they're so friendly, <laughs> and they always find a solution. So I would say the I, all in all, just the support I felt with the with the school, with the college, um, really did make a huge difference. That's great. That's so good to hear. And I know you mentioned that um, you going through school and and finishing was kind of like a family effort. Everyone was behind you. What did you graduating mean to those around you? Oh, my gosh. Yes. So um, the kids, my kids, they are eight and 11. And they um, just as much as they studied, mommy was studying, too. So they saw they saw the struggle, um, but they also were cheering me on. You know, I, I know I had to say no to a lot of things, especially on the weekends. Um, my husband had to take the kids out and try to entertain them while I was writing a paper or studying. And um, and then I would say it's okay. I, it's we're almost done. <laughs> you know, we're <laughs> we're almost there. And it was we because they truly were there supporting me, encouraging me, and it was a true celebration when I got that final capstone grade back and I passed, everybody celebrated. <laughs> it would truly was a family effort. And, um, but, but I think what's most importantly is they see my, now my kids see the value of education and my mm-hmm. husband and I, um, we're both educated now and it just feels like we are um, at a different level and, um, and truly, you know, I, the sky's the limit. Yeah, that's so great and so true. How does it feel for you personally to be a Penn Foster graduate and to maybe even get a degree which you maybe thought you never would or never thought possible? You know, um, that that's a, a really deep question. I feel like, um, and, and I, I know many struggle with it, um, it, it feels like 
you know, I always would say I had some kind of educational deficiency <laughs> because <laughs> I didn't have it. Um, and, you know, and, and I always tried to justify not having it. But at the end of the day, it was because I didn't, I, you know, I didn't believe in myself. I wasn't sure that I could achieve it. And the closer you get, I remember printing off the, um, all of the courses and checking off the box every time I finished one within the semester. And just thinking to myself, it, I can do this one step at a time. I just need to keep pushing forward. And who cares how long it takes? <laughs> just one step at a time. Um, and it really, um, I would say it, 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 it propelled my confidence because with every course that I achieved, I started to believe in myself more. Um, but it is, it's very uh, disheartening and to think that you cannot get to the finish line, but, mm -hmm. um, but truly it is so empowering, empowering to get there and just feel like, you know, I, I did it. I can do it. So it's, it really is life changing. I love that so much. And we're so proud of you. So definitely congratulations on both of your degrees. Um, Angela, I just want to wrap up with one final question. What are three words you would use to describe your Penn Foster experience? Just do it. That's a good three just words. Just do it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's perfect. And, yes. And just do it because many of us just think, should we even try? And the answer is just do it. That's great. I love that. Angela, thank you so much. I really appreciate you talking with me today. Thank you.